This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. Siobhan Scott is joining us. Psychotherapist and author of the book, The Minds of Mass Killers. Understanding and interrupting the pathway to violence. We're talking about Brian Koberger and his arraignment, which just took place uh, this week. Uh, October 2nd is the date now set for trial. Uh, Siobhan, he was standing there in court this week, and when it was time to make a plea, they stood silent. And and I should note, everyone has in their mind what this may have looked like. He literally did not just stand there and not say anything, and everybody's like, you're going to say something? His attorney literally did stand up and said, Your Honor, we are going to stand silent. And with that, the judge then entered the not guilty plea, because that's what you do when someone stands silent. Uh, it, it was an interesting move, uh, nonetheless, uh, a power play. I, I really don't know the purpose of it. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of uh, legal maneuvering that, that's going to be going on uh, around that, at least not a, as of right now. What do you think was going through Koberger's mind as he was being charged with burglary and four counts of first-degree murder? If Koberger is indeed guilty, we would assume that he's enjoying the cat and mouse game and enjoying the attention. So there's probably a lot of legal strategizing going on that's including him. And I would anticipate that he's not terribly upset about this. You know, as, as counterintuitive as it seems, mm -hmm. this could have been part of the game the whole time. And, and he very likely thinks that he's going to get off, no matter how overwhelming the evidence is. So this is a guy that's not really grounded in the same reality the rest of us are in, which makes it hard to understand. And obviously innocent until proven guilty. Uh, if he is, in fact, guilty of this, is this someone who who understands that he's guilty if he did this this crime? Or could this be something where he truly believes he's innocent, even though he committed the crimes, if, if that yeah. is the case? Yeah, no, I, I think he truly knows he's guilty. There's absolutely no evidence that he's psychotic or has any kind of a serious mental illness. So I think if if he is guilty, if he's the perpetrator here, you have the classic dark triad, psychopathy, narcissism, and sadism. He's a very manipulative person, and it's all a big game to him. And um, there's no sense of, oh, gee, I've done a terrible thing, and I should you know, feel guilty or have remorse. It's like this was part of the game. You know, People who commit these crimes generally know at some point they're going to be caught. Um, of course, they would like to avoid being caught before they can do this on a repeated basis. But they generally have in mind that at some point there is going to be a reckoning and then they have in mind a, a game plan. So that would be my guess here. It was interesting this week that apparently there was a, a news report. I'm not sure of the source mm -hmm. about Koberger um, possibly coming to the rescue of a female student who someone had broken into her house and moved things around in her residence yeah. and that he then came in to install security cameras to help her out. And of course, if this is true um, and depending on the system that he set up, it's quite possible that he would have then be, been able to observe her without her knowledge over the security cameras. And this is all very feasible. Um, it, technology being what it is, um, security systems are usually Internet accessed at this point. So someone could certainly do that. And it would, if this is true, it would fit with the pattern for sexual domination killers. Oftenly, they start off as voyeurs. Mm -hmm. You know, they begin with fantasies, usually in their early teen years. That progresses to fixations on specific people. The fantasies begin to center on. And then they do surveillance and stalking. And this is part of the thrill for them. You know, I'm watching you and you don't know this. And they develop, you know, even more elaborate fantasies. And so this would not be surprising if this is true. And some of them, of course, progress to sexual assault, but don't go any further. And then others progress to murder. And, and what a twisted way of trying to gain someone's trust of I'm going to help you. Yeah, this is uh, this is kind of scary that someone's coming in here moving things around, although it's likely him. Who's exactly. Exactly. Around. So it, yeah. it, it's creating he, he's becoming the hero in, in this case or in, in that sort of an accusation there. 
uh, but in, in reality, uh, still a villain, because uh, I'm sure it's not used. The whole intent is not to necessarily help the individual. It's it's to stalk them. It's totally about stalking. And there's a term that we use duping delight. It's like putting something over on someone, fooling someone, getting someone to trust you when you have all these ulterior motives going on. And so a, a killer like this, that duping delight is a big part of their behavior. You know, they enjoy mm -hmm. that part of the process. Let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the accusations that came out uh, recently on Dateline uh, about the family having uh, their holiday dinner over Thanksgiving. Uh, and one of the sisters saying, yeah, you know, you got a white Elantra. This it could be you. And then actually trying to rally the family, allegedly, to take a little closer look into this with Brian constantly wearing uh, latex gloves and then discovering that the back of his car had been cleaned out uh, with bleach that in itself, I can't imagine being the talk about an uncomfortable family holiday. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, as I understand it, one of the sisters, it may have been that sister is a, is a mental health therapist, mm -hmm. you know? So you would have to figure um, that at least somebody in the family was noticing some red flags, the location, the car, the gloves, and, you know, um, it would certainly be bizarre if they didn't notice and they didn't try to address it. How do families react? I mean, obviously it probably varies by family to family, but when you have something like that happen and you have a member of your family that really looks to be pretty damn guilty, uh, do families tend to rally around that person and not believe the, the harsh, scary reality if the allegations are true or, or how often do we have families that stand up and go, Oh my gosh. Yeah. You, we think you are the one who did this. Yeah, yeah. It does depend on the family. But very often, you know, typically parents have tremendous blind spots when it comes to being able to look at their own kids objectively. And I'm sure there's probably a biological reason for that, right? We all look at our babies and we just think they're perfect and can do no wrong and sure. and defend them forever. Um, but often there are people in the family, often siblings, who do see... Uh, a dark side about someone, whether, I mean, they don't have to be a murderer, but it may be, you know, my brother's an alcoholic or is irresponsible with money or whatever. Sometimes parents don't see it, but a sibling does. And that's, that's not unusual. And I'm going to imagine that could create quite a, a rift as well. If, if one of the siblings is over there going, I totally think he did it. And I'm not saying that, that she is, uh, but it, it could be the case uh, where yeah. you have a sibling that's like, how are you all blind to this? Uh, while parents try and wrestle with the idea that their son could have potentially killed four people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's, it's you know, a tough thing for families, but usually the healthiest person in the family is the one that can come out and speak the truth, mm -hmm. who sees the evidence and can, you know, make a judgment based upon that. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. Siobhan Scott, thank you so much for your insight into the case. Always, always appreciate it. Hey, if you like the podcast, be sure to press subscribe wherever you download podcasts. You don't miss any breaking updates and discussions on these cases as we follow them for you right here. Get an ad-free experience through Apple Podcasts and get access to all of our podcasts ad-free. There's a whole bunch of them to binge away on. When you subscribe there, do check that out. I'm Tony Bruschi. Stay with us.